So this story takes place when I was about 16 years old. Alright guys, before we start the video, uh, I want to let you all know something. Today, um, every week of Friday, there's going to be where we all get together and we talk. Um, well, we don't talk, we get together and see um, scary videos together and, you know, good stuff land and you know it's, it's just like a little you know gathering where we get to be in our own um state of mind and we get to watch videos together like yeah so um every friday is gonna be spooky friday so i hope you guys love the new event that we have going on and enjoy at my school, I played for the volleyball. We would go to a camp and do volunteer work for this guy. The camp was in the middle of nowhere. When we got to the camp, we immediately started to work until 8 p.m. This was around October, so it was already dark at 8. My two friends and I were sitting around the fire, trying to figure out something we could do so we weren't so bored. We heard that there was a small river down the hill from the camp, and we thought we could check it out. The problem was, is that it was some guy's property, and the owner of the camp told us to not disturb him since the guy was a little strange. We weren't really supposed to leave the camp, but being 16 years old, we loved breaking the rules. We walked about 10 minutes from the camp and finally reached the river. It was bigger than we expected, and there was a large wooden bridge that crossed it. The bridge was about 20 feet long and was big enough to let a truck go over it. My two friends and I decided to go under the bridge and check it out. As we were walking by the shore... I don't know about you guys, but this is so funny because every time they're like teenagers, they always go somewhere because you know how they are. They, they Look, get so we saw two headlights off in the distance no, moving towards the bridge, funny. so we bolted underneath them and hid. We then heard the oh, truck roll that's over that's our heads okay. and to the other side. Did you see a car My friends and I chilled there for a while, right just talking and throwing very, rocks in the water. Scary. It was about 8.30 at this time, and now it was pretty much pitch black. Yeah, that's when we started to hear a either. slow rumble in the distance. The same truck had come back, and this time it was moving much slower. Oh, we stayed put under cotton. the bridge, stifling our laughter. Eventually, the truck moved over the bridge, but rather than going over to the other side, the truck stopped right on top of us. Mm. The only thing you could hear was the rushing water and the hum of the engine. Then, the door of the truck swung open, and out oh, came a loud thump on top right of the bridge. Guy. Then we heard a loud scream, saying, I know you're out there! I'm gonna find you! Ooh, they got I looked at my friends, and they were both shaking in fear. This must have been the crazy property owner, and he seemed pissed that we were on his land. Of course he's pissed. He started screaming and saying he was going to hurt us if he finds us. We could see that he had it's a flashlight the guy with the was swinging it around looking for in us. Front and we heard he's loud like, thumps as he what? walked around a little bit, right calling now. out for us, and like, thank like God he never went under the bridge. Anything until now. Eventually, it went silent, and it sounded as if he went back into his truck. I was too terrified to move. I sat there for about 10 minutes, and then my one friend, who we'll call Trevor, whispered in my ear, saying that we have to go. I gave him a quick nod, and in slow motion, we moved out from under the bridge. We started to army crawl on the shoreline of the river, and I remember looking behind me to see the top of the bridge. I saw a white Ford F-150. In the driver's seat was the man, staring right at me with a sinister smile, and he even gave me a little wave. At that moment, I screamed and ran. My friend saw me run and took off after me. I could hear screaming from behind us. I took a quick glance behind me and saw that he was chasing after us, and I couldn't oh, quite make God. out the object in his hand, but it seemed to be a weapon of some sort. We ran into the forest and ducked behind a bush. It was pitch black in the forest, and we couldn't hear a thing. We sat there for a while, just shaking. The man never walked by us, and we never heard him. After we gathered our courage, we got up and walked back to camp, got into our tents, to and tried to fall asleep. The next morning, we talked to the camp owner about the man that owned the property of the river. The camp owner said that he didn't know much about the man, but he knows that he has some mental problems and he'd been accused of assault. 
Ooh. I am so happy that we were able to escape from yeah, underneath the bridge. They, they really got I can't imagine what would have happened if he caught us. All right, next this video is called Creepy Neighbor. We would Horror fly from our home state in California to Minnesota to visit really my father's family for the summer. Anime. I've always enjoyed it there because of the nature and peaceful atmosphere. Mm -hmm. My father's so family lived better. far from Hold the on. nearest town. There you go. My father's family lived far from the nearest town, and he only had two neighbors. My only friend there was a girl who lived next door. Let's call her Morgan. She's around my age, and me, my sister, and her would always play from sunrise to sunset. One day at around 4 p.m., we were outside playing badminton. My sister hit the birdie oh, too hard really and high high landed in the next door neighbor's yard. Morgan said she had more inside her house and went to get them. I felt uncomfortable leaving it there, so I told my sister I'll go get it myself. She told me not to do it and just wait for Morgan. While my sister was fixing the net, I decided to run and get it real quick. As I was about to enter the gate, my sister grabbed me from behind and began telling me how much of a bad idea it was. That's when an old man came out from behind the house. He picked up the birdie and said, Is this yours? I said yes and asked if I could have it back. Uh, that, that, he said he had his grandchildren's old toys upstairs and asked if, if I was to stop and see this guy like pick up something that belongs to me, I wouldn't take it back. It would just be really weird just to take something back from him. Like, look at that big freaking nose that he has. And those weird eyes that look like zombie eyes. And his skin color is faded. It's not even freaking alive. But anyways, I don't want to interrupt you guys even more. So we, let's get back into it. Have them. Me and my sister were very young at the time. And we thought as he lived so close. And he looked like a typical sweet grandfather. How does he look like happen. a typical So we agreed and entered through the back door. Don't you the first thing I noticed face? was the stench. Or that it big nose damp, that he got. Rotting food. It's so I shrugged creepy. it off at the time since he was old. Maybe he lived alone. We heard Morgan Wait, calling our names and we politely told the old man that we had to go. Maybe we'd return tomorrow. Morgan saw us through the window and immediately asked what we were doing there. I answered, the sweet old man. And she cut me off and said that the house was abandoned since she moved there. That's I thought she was just playing is. around with me and told her to cut it out. She had a blank expression, and that's when I knew that she was serious. We never told anyone because we didn't want to cause any trouble. But now that I'm older, I wonder if Little it was some kids. ghost or a creepy mean. old man luring kids into that house. Yep. The house got demolished recently, that's which good. is why I wanted to share this story. Well, you're pretty good, my friend, for sharing that. All right, guys, third animation, Home Innovation Horror Story. It was a cold, foggy evening when I contacted a close friend of mine to stay at my place for the night. Both of us were only 10 years old at the time, and my parents were often at work until midnight, so I was usually alone with nothing to do except watching a television show or reading a book. My friend Alex had agreed to come over and brought a game of Monopoly to pass over the time. I also asked if he was interested in going to explore an abandoned subway station three miles away. He seemed excited at first, so... Ooh. I remembered that the subway dated back to the mid-1920s and became abandoned in 1932 after the market crash in 1929. I was very fascinated about its history, but never got the chance to go inside after my parents had warned me not to enter. As I quietly slept in my bed, I heard what sounded like a gunshot coming from the forest behind the house. Both well, of us woke weird. up frightened after what we had heard, and I told my friend not to worry as hunters tend to go into the forest on frequent occasions, but when I checked the time, it was 11.39pm. This seemed very unusual as hunters only came into the forest between 8pm and 10pm. I looked at Alex and decided to get out of my bed, intending to look through the window and spot for anyone in the forest. The darkness clouded my vision so I was unable to see anyone in the forest. I turned around and looked at Alex again, when suddenly I heard the front door squeak open. Obviously, because Chills went that. down my spine. Both of us quietly moved to the bathroom, locked the door, and kept the light off. It was the only safe place he in the house. Like his hand right there. Both of us were terrified as we desperately tried to keep as calm as we could. 
We heard footsteps getting louder and louder until they stopped in front of the bathroom door. And then this is when the most terrifying sound forced my heart to almost burst. Both of us screamed as the person chopped the door to pieces. It was pitch black inside the room, making it hard to find the vent. And by the time I spotted the vent, the person behind the door had made a hole big enough for us to see him. The man adorned black leather and was wearing a plague doctor mask. I scurried back to the vent, but it was too high above the floor for us to reach it. So Alex told me to go first because he was the strongest. He lifted me up on his shoulders, allowing me to open the vent and crawl inside. When I looked at the door again, the man had managed to f go first because he was the strongest. He lifted me up on his shoulders, allowing me to open the vent and crawl inside. When I looked at the door again, the man had managed to fit his arm through the hole and reached for the lock. I quickly grabbed Alex's hand, but struggled to pull him up into the vent. Alex! I shouted and began going after him. I pursued the figure until I was led to the abandoned subway deep within the forest. Why it was chilly and foggy, alone? meaning that I could only see objects within a range of five or six yards. Knowing that he's young. Inside the subway was a pool of freezing That's cold stupid. water. It was so dark that I couldn't see anything. I had to rely on listening to the screams from Alex and track the source. As I slowly walked through the subway, I was now struggling to breathe under the intense stress and fear of the situation. Alex! I called, but there was no response. I continued walking through the water until the exit was no longer visible. I was now experiencing a massive panic attack. I had lost track of Alex, and I had no idea where I was or how to get out. Where are you, Alex? Oh, we got him, guys. Guys, that is not good. Alright guys, we're going to end the video here. If you guys want to see more spooky, scary Fridays or or even more videos, click that like button and subscribe and be sure to comment. And if you are new to the channel, Spooky Friday is when we all get together as the Nighthawks and we we sit down, grab your drinks and snacks or whatever that you got and you go sit in front 